Caddis Maximus here. Not a review this time. I had got this little uh, kind of laser star show thing that was sold for laser stage lighting. It's a real cheesy kind of Chinese Amazon thing. Didn't work. It was at a garage sale for a dollar, and the green uh, laser didn't work. And so I figured I'd uh, take it apart and do a little project. Uh, I kind of like this as the idea of actually getting the green laser to work. Hopefully it wasn't burned out, and I've already checked, and it's not. So this has the ability to be mounted on a tripod, something like this, and so I thought it might be neat just to have a green laser line that I can uh, mount on a tripod and shi uh, shine at things. I think it's pretty cool. Mainly for like a Christmas decoration lighting or any other kind of project. You, know, you could set it up somewhere and use a level uh, and use it as a green level line, but there's you know lots of commercial products for that. This is about just finding some old piece of electronics and actually... Uh, bringing it back to life and modifying it. So I'm not going to use the little motor that does the uh, animation and I'm not going to use the red laser, but the red laser works so I am going to check on the voltage before I take it out so I can mark it on it. And to show what this does, this is actually a poor version or a cheap version of, actu of one of these whoop, let me turn that back on here. One of these uh, star shower things, these uh, laser Christmas star shows. This is how this thing is supposed to look more or less animated red and green laser dots except for the fact that in that star shower it's much higher quality obviously it's made for outdoors so it's waterproof has a higher quality green laser because in that there's a heater for it so when it's really cold like in the winter green lasers don't like to operate when they're really cold so those have heaters in them they're also sealed so no dust can get in on the lasers. Those use a brushless stepper motor so they're made to run uh, just you know days on and on and this uses just a cheesier brush type simple DC motor. But this whole unit runs off of 5 volts. So I can make a little adapter and use like one of these uh, USB batteries to uh, power this thing. But it did come with its own power brick. Anyway, since I'm using this as just a straight green laser, I gotta eliminate most of the stuff that's in here. I kind of like the aluminum housing and the fact it has a little 5 volt cooling fan. Part of this being for uh, you know, little bedroom LED devices. It has a uh, microphone so it can be sound activated. So I'm actually just gonna end up eliminating that uh, right now. I've already got the green laser unscrewed. The wires were actually just had come loose somehow probably because it was sitting on top of a speaker and vibrated and then somebody just did a uh, uh, not the greatest job soldering it. I probably won't do a perfect job but I did verify the green laser actually does work and it was a wiring issue. So I'm just gonna strip and re-solder those back on. It'll be delicate because that is a tiny little uh, green laser. So my understanding with the green lasers versus red lasers is green lasers actually uh, are more of a true laser, quote unquote, because they use a neodymium crystal in them. So it uses an infrared diode laser. A red laser is just a different type of diode laser. And this has one lens. And so red lasers tend to not be as focused. So as you get further away, it gets more and more spread apart. Where because of the nature of the, using a diode against a crystal, these green ones have two lenses in them which means a much more confined beam uh, much more confined beam is and why green lasers seem so much brighter secondly human eyes are more sensitive to the color green anyway just gonna take a second here to power this on I'll take apart the gearbox I can feel the motor buzzing but <laughs> it doesn't want to turn so we got some jam gears but I was just doing this whole thing so I can get a quick voltage measurement and write it on that little red laser so I can have it around for future projects. They have a little mirror and this is a, one of those special laser mirrors where if it, the laser shines on on one side it reflects it but if a laser shines on the other side it passes through it and that's how it runs both lasers at the same time is that uh, key special piece of glass with its real special so I'm wondering if they're just running I don't think they're running a full 5 volts to this laser I think they're 2.3 volts and that's why I measure it so if I ever want to get that laser going I know what kind of voltage it's gonna want okay now I got that established I know these two wires are still my green that's why I'm leaving them connected and I might as well write on that connector in case I do want to put it back in 
the little R there, and then of course for the green, we'll put a little G. And what is that? Oh, that's the motor. And then what is this one? That's the fan. And we know the microphone's on the bottom. Actually, let's get that motor unplugged. Let's get this stuff. Uh, I guess I'm undoing all these screws then. I'll get the 2.3. This laser actually is on a convenient little plastic block. I'll leave it on there. But I do want to write 2. Point. Well, it's hard to write on these surfaces. That's for sure. Here's that special piece of glass. This has, I don't know if there's something special about the glass or if it's just the coating. You can see the coating on one side does appear you can see at that angle it's different different color same angle maybe it's the same color but it's a little bit strange this whole thing is just kind of it's in there with some kind of horrid glue to tell you the truth but I'm gonna save that little piece of glass because of uh, what it does with lasers while my soldering iron is heating up let's take a quick look at this motor here see if we can't figure out why it's jamming up I'm not going to use the motor. And so what ends up happening is there is two sets of beam splitters. One that's a little crystal in the front and one that's in the front of this motor. And as they spin, uh, the two beam splitters interacting with each other give the, all the different dots and the way that they dance around and move. And I may not keep those. Those things seem to be a dime a dozen. Those kind of beam splitters, they can make them out of plastic. These actually appear to be glass at least. Glass ones obviously are much better, don't get foggy, maintain uh, greater sharpness. That was the deal with the star showers is that they were kind of overpriced for um, you know, animated Christmas light, laser Christmas lights. But they were sharp and they did work pretty well. Oh, we have more screws. Anyway, this was just a little 4th of July kind of a weird project video. This is kind of what I do. I always do all these reviews of all this stuff uh, just because I like to uh, hoard and collect stuff. But I do do projects, and uh, it's kind of nice to have all these different tools when you get into doing little things like this. This was all the impetus for this was I'm already bad enough at doing fabrication uh, self projects, but man, just not having the right tools or not having any the uh, very good tools or at least tools that work for the job they're intended for just makes it so much more difficult when you're already not great at doing projects. When you do have at least the proper tools and know which ones to select or uh, are aware of what you have, then you can really apply them and a lot of things work out a lot better. Uh, it's a little less frustrating. So here's our little gearbox. There's a little output gear. There it is. Wow, this thing is geared way down. Uh, this has a huge number of stages in it. Yes, indeed. This little gearbox is a 7 to 1 rate, or 7 stage, excuse me. There's the motor on the right, the output on the left, and there is 6 idler gears. So it's a uh, 7 stage reduction that's a huge gear reduction it's surprising and one something got you know it seems to turn fine so it was probably uh the motor itself was failing probably why they got rid of it that's why these cheap brush motors are just terrible in these applications because these are the kind of devices that you want to leave running for uh, hours or days at a time in a bedroom or using or for other applications and uh the stupid little brush motors like this will just wear out. They only have so many hours of runtime. A long time ago, I did a project video like this, and that's why I'm pausing and uh, cutting so much, is just to not have it be some half hour thing. It's already going to be long enough. So now, what I got to do is solder these tiny little 
this wire on these tiny little connections here on the back of the green LED or excuse me laser and we'll be ready to go. I'll have to get some micro shrink tubing because otherwise uh, the positive will short out against the case which is always a special situation. I'm using one of these cheesy wire strippers because on really small wire it's actually an issue finding wire strippers that go small enough and if you don't have wire strippers that go small enough then when you try to strip it you're always pulling at an angle which ends up cutting off the wire and that's uh, can definitely be frustrating but having one of these just works great for this simple little wire sometimes you can just use your fingernail your thumbnail that usually works uh, pretty well but on some types of insulations uh, it just doesn't cooperate all right a couple pieces of shrink tubing of course it's not just tools it's also supplies supplies are a big big deal Always remember to put your shrink tubing on the wires before you solder them. I found that it makes it a lot easier to get the shrink tubing on when the connections uh, are not soldered together. Meaning that it's impossible once they're... I always do that. Solder something and then uh, realize that the shrink tubing isn't anywhere to be seen. So I'm going to mount this in this little electronics vise so that I can get a better grip on it. And have some vestige of being able to... Wow, this is finally threaded up. Uh, solder this properly rather than putting like a little dab of solder on the soldering iron, trying to hold the wire with one hand. If you have the opportunity to get the wires to hold themselves together, uh, I would advise it. Uh, that way you can use two hands for soldering. Soldering really is a job that uh, three or four hands, then you could really get some perfect soldering. So we'll use the helping hands here to help my hands. They call these little alligator clip stands uh, helping hands. It's, it's kind of a little bit funny. So, twist those wires up a little bit. They're so small, I don't have to worry about like pre tinning them or anything like that. Uh, let's see if I can't get it to some kind of booger on that connection. This is the hard part. Just kind of figuring out a way to maybe get it to. It's hard on a thin wire to get it just to really sit there properly without kind of hooking it, but you want it to be straight so there isn't uh, anything too, nothing too much sticking out. It looks like we're actually going to be okay like that. And I'm trying to keep my hands, you know, from being too much into the camera view. This is always kind of awkward. And this kind of stuff, you can't work through the camera because, uh, you just can't see. We'll wet that a little bit. See if we can't get this soldered. Ah, see. I had no choice. That is a difficult soldering job right there. All right, I think we did it. This is a super difficult soldering job because the connections are so short and close up into the back of this laser, as well as the wires seeming to sink the heat qu quite easily and quite quickly, especially if you bump the soldering iron against the aluminum and it just sucks all the heat just out of it in no time. We'll give this heat shrink tubing some good old lighter treatment here and get it all shrunk up and uh, get this thing back together. And look, we were successful. I'll do a couple of demonstrations in a second on why these are so neat. Okay, got it back together and uh, it seems to be working just fine. Although what is interesting here is that we have an odd little shadow because the darn laser you can see the, the alignment, it just, uh, just the cheapness of this product, that the center line of that laser is pretty far off from the center line of the hole in the faceplate, I mean, and so it's causing this weird reflection from the actual shininess of the inside of the aluminum hole. But a cool feature is I still retain the uh, strobing effect, so slow or fast, actually that's not the coolest thing. 
So at the end of the long project video, why did I do this and make a video? Because now I have a you know a plug-in green laser, and you can do something like this. I have this little glass can candle holder right here, and if we get this set up just right uh, with the laser, we can really get a real nice glow there. And if we turn off the light, then you can really see, and it barely lights up the glass cap, but inside there, there's actually this. Uh, glass etched globe and so that's the wonderful thing is the laser you can do this and you can remotely light stuff you know this can be shining down from your roof onto something in the yard and not from roof but you know a window and just it glows unbelievably like no other kind of LED or incandescent bulb could ever hope to just because of the intensity and how the color of the lights perfect this is green this is 532 nanometers and nothing else Anyway, I did put it on a little tripod here. That was the whole point, so I could aim it and put different things in front of it here. We have another globe. Well, that is intense right there. And then with the laser, let me move that more to where you can see it. We can get this just adjusted right so I can just get the kind of glow that I want. It uses a ball. That tripod, though, it's a cheesy little plastic one, except for it uses a pinch on a sphere. And the thing about a pinch on a sphere is it stays in position when you do it. Even the crottiest designs, uh, the ball joint clamps stay put, or at least hold the position. It's not you like you adjust it and then it like drifts in one direction or another. And you can see you have this dark black background here. There is you know light coming off the back of the ball, but as far as the rest of the background is concerned, there's a little flare and it's just green glowing sphere and no other light anywhere else. Most of the light or almost all of it's passing through and traveling out the back so it isn't casting around the surface and it gives it this kind of weird artificial look. Here's one of those cast glass Christmas trees and look at that that gives it an incredible light and it's super easy. And finally is this this thing which I'll whoop. Oh I zoomed in the whole time I guess it didn't matter but this is one of those you know, those weird things where they use lasers to create bubbles in a piece of glass. But using a laser, a, a visible laser, to light it up is just amazing. And this is actually, I think I just mentioned one of the Lord of the Rings, the one ring uh, with the, like, the elven writing. So it's kind of a fan thing. But it's in glass, and once again, when we light it up with the laser, it looks amazing. Anyway, sorry for so much zoom during that video. Uh, I'm getting better at these project videos, trying to get the everything kind of set up to where the, both the camera can see it and I can work on it halfway decently. Now, I did a bunch of speed ups in this video, but they just didn't really work out, and so that's why uh, it's more in this format and there's a bunch of cuts. I'll get better at that, but this was just like a 4th of July project video. And, of course, showing how cool green lasers are. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.